Good day everyone. Our topic for today is all about collection of data. Let's start. The data may be collected for the whole population or for a sample only. And mas madalas, ito ay kinokollect sa sample. Siyempre, collecting data is very difficult job. Kailangan may training before ka sumabak sa pagkakollect ng data. So the enumerator or investigator is well-trained individual who collects the statistical data. The respondents are the persons from whom the information is collected. So meron tayong dalawang klase ng pinagkukunan ng data. So we have the first one is documentary sources. So pag sinabing documentary sources, those are the information contained in published or unpublished reports Statistics, internet, letter, magazine, newspaper, diaries, and so on and so forth. In short, pag sinabi natin documentary sources, ito ay mga nakasulat, nakaprint sa papel, pwede sa internet, etc., etc. Next is the field source. So this would include individuals who have sufficient knowledge and experience regarding the study and their investigation. Documentary sources ay nahati sa dalawang klase. We have the primary data. Primary data are the first-hand information which is collected, compiled, and published by organizations for some purposes. Also, pas nabi natin primary data, ito ay original. So, the data gathered are original. Second one, kung meron tayong original data, meron tayong tinatawag na secondary data. So, ito naman yung mga sinabi na isang tao Tapos, babanggitin nung iba. Or, merong study na na ginawa, and then, uulitin pa nung ibang tao or gagawing references. So, yung tatawag na secondary data. So, secondary data are the second-hand information which is already collected by an organization for some purposes and are available for the present study. Okay, let's continue. So, meron tayong five simple tools pag collect ng data, we have the direct method, the indirect method, the registration, experiment, and the observation method. And marami pang ibang tools pag collect ng data. Pero magpe-present lang tayo dito ng limang basic example ng data collection tools. Okay, simulan natin sa number one, direct method. The direct method is often referred to as interview method. Ito yung advantage. It provides consistent and precise information. Siyempre, kung kaharap mo yung ini-interview mo, yung makukuha mong information is precise. Also, the question may be repeated or modified to suit to each interviewee's level of understanding. So, kung hindi niya maintindihan yung tanong doon sa question mo, pwede mong ulitin, pwede mong i-rephrase, or another advantage nito, pwede kang mag-follow up questions sa kanya para mas maging precise yung, yung information na makukuha. Disadvantage. Siyempre, kung may advantage, meron yung disadvantage. So, ito yung mga disadvantage ng interview method. Una, time-consuming. Siyempre, kung sampu ang interviewin mo, kailangan mo ng mahabang oras. Baka isa lang, pag napasarap ang usapan, baka humaba ng mga halos 30 minutes. So, time-consuming siya. Another is expensive. Bakit sinabing expensive? Kasi kapag nag interview tayo, syempre kailangan natin silang bigyan ng pagkain. Baka kasi mamaya hindi pa sila kumakain or kailangan ng merienda, maiinom. Also, has a limited field coverage. And another thing pala sa expensive is kailangan mo mamasahe para makapunta sa place na yon And so on and so forth. Kung meron kang mga gamit, so kailangan pong magbayad ng magkakarga noon, kung may assistant ka, and the rest. And yun nga, as a limited field coverage. So pag nagpunta ka sa isang barangay, siguro yung isang barangay lang na yun malilibot mo sa loob ng isang araw. Or baka hindi mo pa ma malibot yun. Okay, so limited lang yung pwede mong uh, makover kapag gumamit ka ng interview method. Okay, so let's move on to the second. We have the indirect method. So, naman yung indirect method? 
indirect method is popularly known as the questionnaire method. So, ito naman yung advantage pag gamit ka ng questionnaire. Questionnaire may be mailed or handheld. So, ito, pwede mong i-distribute, pamigay mo lang parang pamphlet, or i-email mo, pwede mo i-send, and so on and so forth. Another advantage nito is hindi siya magastos. Diba? Kung sesend mo lang sa email yan, wala ka naman gagastos sa internet lang. And sabi dito, can cover a wide area in a shorter period of time. So, kung mag-send ka ng email, kahit buong Pilipinas, masesendan mo sa isang click lang. Okay? So, pwede mong sendan yung nasa Mindanao, Visayas, lagi mo lang yung email address nila, then send click, and mapapadala mo na. Okay? Siyempre, kung merong advantage, meron disadvantage yan. So, ito yung disadvantage. Questions not easily understood will probably not be answered. Kung hindi na maintindihan nung magsasagot yung tanong mo, eh malamang hindi yung sasagotan. Isa pa, na disadvantage, paano kapag hindi na-receive agad yung email sa takdang oras? So, kung kailangan mo na that time, tapos hindi pa nakikita nung pinadalhan mo, hindi siya makapag-response agad. Okay? So, yun yung mga disadvantage niya. So, next na tayo. We have the registration method. So, it is a method of utilizing the existing data or fact or information. So, in short, paiksiin na natin, ito yung mga kailangan mong i-register. Example nito yung mga birth certificate, death certificate, motor vehicle. So, lahat na inire-register. So, sa paraang yun, makakuha tayo ng mga information or data. Okay, sa panahon ngayon, pandemic. So, kung pupunta ka sa mall, magre-register ka, susulat ka sa isang papel. So, ibig sabihin nun, madedetermine nila, magkakaroon sila ng data na that time and that day, pumunta ka sa place na yun. Okay? Next is the experiment method. So, ito ay medyo scientific. This method is used if the researcher would like to determine the cause and effect relationship of a certain phenomena under investigation. Dito naman, sa experiment method, ang focus natin is yung cause and effect. Sabi ko nga kanina, ito ay medyo scientific. Okay? And this is used in making scientific inquiry. And move on tayo. Sa last one, the observation method. This method is used to collect data pertaining to attitudes, behavior, values, and cultural patterns of the sample under investigation. So, mga example na pwede nating makollect using observation method ay mga quality of housing. So, hindi naman natin madadaan sa interview yan. Paano interview ng bahay? So, kailangan mo lang siyang i-observe. Next is condition ng roads. So, lahat yan ay observation na yung magagamit natin. Traffic patterns, etc. etc. Okay, so, lahat yan ay ginagamit ng observation method. Now, observation method is helpful when kailangan mo ng direct information. So, kailangan mo agad ng information, i-observe mo siya. So, trying to understand ongoing behavior or if when there is a physical evidence, products, or output that can be observed. Ways to record information from observations. So, kailangan mo ng observation guide. So, printed with space to record. Kumbaga, pag nagpunta ka sa isang place, so may checklist ka na dapat. Nachachekan mo na lang para mabilis. Okay? Record sheet or checklist. Next is field notes. List structured, recorded in narrative or descriptive style. Example ng observation method ay yung mga documentaries. Yung mga napapanan nyo sa TV. So, pwede nilang i-record yun, pwede yung pakwento mo, i-report, and the rest. Okay? Ito yung advantage ng observation method. So, it collects data on actual versus self-reported behavior. So, mas maganda kasi nakita mo siya ng actual on your own kesa yung mga nireport lang sa'yo. And also, it is in real time. Ito naman yung mga disadvantage. 
Siyempre, meron tayong advantage, meron tayong disadvantage. Una, observer bias. Kaya dapat, yung observer na kukunin natin o yung mag observe ay well-trained. Kasi, posible tayong magkaroon ng observer bias. Next, potentially unreliable. Coding challenges. So, syempre, mahirap mag, habang nag observe ka, ay nagre-record ka. Paano kapag nakalimutan mo? ba? Diba? So, iyon ang isang disadvantage ng observation method. Posible kasi na hindi mo siya ma-record agad. Tapos nakalimutan mo na. Wala na. So, ganun yung mangyayari. Okay, let's have the summary. So, the first one is collection of data. So, yung data na kinukuha natin ay usually nanggagaling sa ating mga sample. And ang pagkuha ng data ay hindi biro. So, ito ay difficult job. Also, kailangan ikaw ay well-trained before ka mag-collect ng mga data. Kailangan alam mo yung kukolektahin mo. Next, sources of data. There are two sources of the collection of data. Isang documentary sources, ito yung mga nakasulat. And yung field source, syempre yan yung mga hindi nakasulat. Okay, and meron tayong limang example ng data collection tools. The first one is direct method or yung ating tinatawag na interview method, indirect method, or yung questionnaire method. We have the registration, the experiment, and the last one is observation method. And that's all for today. As always, that's it.